The black boxes have revealed how Flight 574 crashed. But they also raise crucial questions. It's just one error after another. There was ample opportunity, ample time for the pilots to correct the situation. The investigators have come to a disturbing conclusion. But the only mechanical failure was with the plane's navigation system. And that shouldn't have caused the crash. The more significant failures were human. They put the IRS in attitude. But why should qualified pilots make these disastrous mistakes? Don't turn it! This is our heading! To find these answers, investigators must look at the airline itself. This one accident will raise serious questions about Indonesia's entire aviation industry. Investigators turned their attention from the actions of the pilots on Flight 574 to the airline that employed them, Adam Air. They meet with the owners, Franz Wings. Adam Air was founded in 2002 by a wealthy businesswoman named Sandra Ang. Ang named the airline after her son, Adam, whom she also appointed as the company's president. We need to know more about your training program. The investigators interview Adam Air pilots. Did the airline provide any training on recovery procedures in the event of an IRS failure? No. They want to find out more about how the airline trained its flight crews. What about recovery techniques? IRS troubleshooting? No. What they uncover is disturbing. We could not find any evidence that the pilot was properly trained when they have a sudden disengaging autopilot or when they're flying uh, with the iris failure. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time. As they dig deeper, Investigators find an airline plagued with safety issues. Eleven months before the Adam Air crash, in February 2006, another Adam Air plane, Flight 782, flew off course the same way as Flight 574. That crew was also getting faulty navigation data. But they couldn't even reach controllers on the radio. They couldn't get directions they were badly lost for three hours. The crew was trying to find where they were, the ADC was trying to find where they were, and they were over the water. Like Flight 574, they had a malfunctioning IRS. In the end, the plane landed almost 500 kilometers south of where it should have been. They just continued until they found an island. And it had an airport in it, and they said, OK, we have to land there, otherwise we don't know where we're going to go. And they landed, and they didn't know exactly where they were until they landed. Six months after Flight 574, the European Commission banned all Indonesian airlines from flying to Europe. It sent a very strong message to the whole world that we, the European Union, believe that all Indonesian airlines are unsafe, and you should not fly on them. Then, in March 2008, there's another accident involving Adam Air, this time in the city of Batam. And the airplane slewed off the runway, came to rest on the side. The evacuation was a bit strange. No slides were deployed, and uh, that was a final accident. And after that, I think everybody said, enough's enough, you know. People who did care, people who were wanting to shake up the industry and reform it and improve it, were horrified that the situation had been so bad within Adam Air and that the authorities had allowed such a situation to continue and deteriorate. Immediately after the crash in Batam, the Indonesian government suspended and then ultimately revoked Adam Air's license to operate. 
It is also apparent that Adam Air isn't the only Indonesian airline with problems. Prior to the Adam Air crash, Indonesia experienced a bad crash about every year to 18 months. Many of those accidents involved the discount carriers that the government had allowed to thrive. More than 50 such airlines were in operation at the time of the Adam Air crash. The problem, though, was that this expansion occurred in a way that was not properly monitored, not properly regulated by the government. Thousands and thousands of people are being employed to work for airlines when they just don't have the experience to do so and are not being adequately trained as the investigation report into the Adam Air crash demonstrated. Indonesia's poor safety record forces the government to take steps to improve airline safety throughout the country. It begins rating airlines on safety and grounds those that don't comply. There have been fewer fatal incidents since the reforms. But a year and a half after it was put in place, the European Union's ban on Indonesian airlines was still in effect. Those familiar with Indonesian aviation think the reforms could go even further. So that we have no more Adamaires, we have no more companies that cut costs too much and gives all these extra risks to the public because that's not what the public should receive. The public should receive a reliable and safe means of air transportation. 